My concern is that most movies being written today, movies and television are written by a generation that is influenced by other movies. Is writing weaker today than it used to be? I would say absolutely writing is weaker today. And, I, and, and I, I've looked at this and, and I think the disappointment I have about it is that one, we live in a time where media is so accessible. In two clicks you can see anything, including movies that just opened in theaters, right? Like whether it's available on a streaming service or whether there are other means, so much content and I despise that word, but I'll use it. So much is available to us that what I fear is the current generation of writers are not influenced by life. They're not influenced by uh, great novels that they've read. They're not influenced by classic films. They're not influenced by travel, where they've traveled the world. They're not influenced by loves that they've had, great loves they've had or loves they've lost. They're not influenced by um, parenting experiences that they might have had or experiences with family or experiences, real world, real life experiences. My concern is that most movies being written today, movies and television are written by a generation that is influenced by other movies. So there's this snake eating its tail of writers influenced by other things they've seen rather than life experiences. When you look at the very first Star Wars movie, George Lucas, I know I bring it up a lot, but Star Wars was influenced by many things, you know, serials from the 1930s, um, from things like Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers. I mean, George Lucas famously just wanted to make Flash Gordon but had trouble with getting the rights. It was influenced by Marvel Comics. It was influenced by a tragic event where he almost died um, in a car accident and was in the hospital for a long period of time. And that near death experience changed George Lucas. Uh, much, much of his influence was from also his father in his life, who was a successful business person who he looked up to. Um, a lot of his experience was growing up in, in Modesto. People, uh, you know, the obsession over car culture and hot rods. And you see that in the character of Han Solo. You know, it's kind of a guy who's into hot rods. The Millennium Falcon is a hot rod. But so much of the influences that George had, both from life and so much uh, classic literature and storytelling, were kind of thrown in a blender. And now you've got every Star Wars movie is just influenced by the last Star Wars movie or the last Star Wars TV show or what they call this horrible term, member berries, which is we're gonna sort of throw out these member berries. Remember that? Remember that character? Remember this character? Remember that? And what it does is it takes, it completely takes the mystery. Half of the fun of some of these characters from the, Star, the world of Star Wars is the fact that we didn't know anything about them, that we could use our imagination. So what's happening is the, what you're doing in is, is you've got this generation of writers that are weaker because they're just influenced by the previous work, right? And then secondarily, you're taking, you're, you're, you're dumbing down the audience and making them lazier because they're, they're not able to even make up something in their head about a character that was once mysterious and had two or three minutes of total screen time in a film series, Boba Fett. Now you've expanded on him to the point where, okay, we get it. We know everything about this character, right? Like, and, and I find that disconcerting. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I think that there's something to be said um, from work that comes from older writers who have had some life experience. I can always spot, just because I've had kids and raised kids who are now off on their own and pay their own bills, which is awesome. But having been through that experience, I can always see how false a parenting relationship is when I see. Whether it's a, a filmmaker, writer, director who has never had children in their lives and I see and there's like, oh, a dad would never do that or no way would a mother act that way towards a child. I just, 
I kind of see that and I think it just, there's a falseness that just comes from my personal experience that now, does it completely ruin the movie? Not necessarily, not necessarily. But I think that writers would benefit from having the time to experience much of life first and then bringing that to their writing. Not in the way of like necessarily a self insert, but at least being able to, what is it like to lose a loved one and happen, you know, have it happen right in front of you. You know what I mean? That, that kind of experience, um, if you've ever been in the room where someone close to you has passed away, um, a very difficult experience to go through and um, part of the therapy dealing with that is through creativity and writing. So I do think that our current generation of writers is, is weak because they haven't taken the time to have those experiences. Sure, there's the age thing. Do you think the internet plays a lot into that? Because it, let's say Gen Xers, we didn't have access to that and right. maybe baby boomers and, and beyond. There, we couldn't just easily go on Rotten Tomatoes or IMDb and look something up. Right. And in some ways that's wonderful, but in some ways maybe it's a disservice to creativity. So Yeah, I think access to too much information can uh, can hamper creativity, you know, when you're bombarded by too much. I, I think I think that that can hurt. I think going on a writing sabbatical is good with no computer, you know. Um, again, bring your notebook. They're portable. They go anywhere. They never run out of power. Although your pen might run out of ink. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I do think that life experience is incredibly important. And when you look at the stories of how some great works were written, the stories behind those, um, whether it's a film or a novel or whatnot, uh, there's always more to the story. There's always more to the story of the primary uh, creative person involved. What about the type of life and the type of, of um, experiences this person has had? Because you know there could be some people that they maybe had more of a sheltered existence so they're only going to have a certain frame of reference for writing a story. Whereas I've known some people that they've gone to Europe, didn't tell their family, had just the clothes on their back and learned to survive there for a month somehow and came back unscathed. But that would that's a different life experience than your parents driving you to college and, and right. getting you set up in your dorm room. Well, I, 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 think, I think the reason that... Um, we live in such a bizarrely divided time where people are fighting over, in my opinion, some of the stupidest arguments I've ever heard. And I think part of it is that we need struggle and we need adversity. Because I believe that struggle, when it comes to us as a human self, is, and the way of overcoming a struggle is, uh, this is gonna sound strange, is puzzle solving. It's Overcoming that is in a, in a video game, it's leveling up, right? But I think part of the struggle is okay. Um, here, you know, you're, you're, you're not making ends meet with your bills. You're gonna keep having that problem until you do something different. You know, your relationship's not working out. Well, it's probably not the people that you're dating. It might be you and the choices that you're making. Solve that problem. And I, I feel like, we live at a time where people are kind of manufacturing problems to experience adversity that they're really not able to experience in their real lives, which explains to so much of the nonsense that you see online with people battling each of each other over things that are uh, pointless. Um, I try to not get involved in those kinds of discussions. I find them a waste of time. And, uh, you know, time is limited. I, I want to focus on the things that matter, right? And, and choose to use my time in a way that's wise where I end up with a result I can look back and go, okay, I sacrifice not arguing with people on Twitter six hours a day, but look what I was able to do. Or rather than writing 1,000, 500 word, 1,000 word Facebook posts arguing how right I am about a thing, I wrote 1,000 words a day and in two months I had enough for a book, enough material for a book which is technically what you would have if you wrote a thousand words a day.
for two months, you'd have enough material for a book. So I think that as humans, you know, we we seek out as a way to kind of level up or or improve our situation. We need that because of, and this is why this is gonna sound like even more of a weird rabbit hole. You can go down and research this even is puzzles are so popular. Puzzles, gaming, video gaming, you know, uh, puzzle solving, checkers, chess. I mean, look at the history of gaming through humanity, right? There's a reason video games are more popular than movies. Video games make more money than movies. And the fun of a video game is solving a problem. And I think we need that. We need that. Our human, we need to puzzle solve, solve issues. We, we, need, we need adversity to fight against, to level up. I think it's, it's your self-awareness, uh, you know, plays a lot into, are you gonna keep going down that road and making that same mistake and spending all that time on social media arguing with people you've never met or maybe like divert that energy into something more useful? So that would be my advice there. But um, uh, go down the rabbit hole of puzzles through human history and you'll find that it's something that, um, th that humans have kind of always had around. And in addition, I would, I would research and look into how children learn. Do children learn through memorization? They can, yeah. Memorization is a great technique for kids to learn. More effective is turning things into games or puzzles. Kids love it and they gravitate towards it. What if we're not designed to be totally harmonious and what if groups need a scapegoat? because it makes them closer. So the group can bond if they have an enemy. Yeah, um, that's a scary thought that you just expressed. And I, and I, and I see that um, when it comes to our current climate. Um, I, I think that that's something as a human species that we need to overcome. I think we have to overcome the, the inclination to do that, to vilify someone as a way to feel superior as a way to uh, other them and vilify whatever it happens to be about. We must learn to resist that urge to do that um, and to have some empathy for someone who may not think the way that you do, who, who, who may live a life that you don't 100% approve of now, if that person isn't doing anything that hurts anybody else, I don't know why that that would bother you. For some people it does. And I think that, that we have not as a species reached that point yet. Um, I like to think that in the uh, Gene Roddenberry future that he envisioned for Star Trek in the original series and, and Next Generation, they talk about having overcome those types of things and um, a more elevated existence were certain types of things. Well, as a human race, we got over that, right? Well, we certainly haven't in our present day. And I hope that we learn to.